there was never a time in history when the Total War series had remained solely in Europe and West Asia. After all, the very first Total War game was indeed Shogun Total War, a game taking place during the Sengoku period in the 15th century. But for the 11 years between 2000 and 2011, Total War took a long break from the Japanese theater before finally making its return. But when it did, Shogun 2 became one of the most universally loved Total War games of all time, currently somehow tied with Empire Total War for the second highest rated Total War after the original Rome. In this video, you and I will be taking a long overdue trip down memory lane and take a look at what made Shogun 2 so awesome, and answer the question of whether Shogun 2 is worth playing in 2022. I, for one, am happy to be making a return to a true historical strategy title, but one game that actually really suits the fantasy look and style and sports some pretty good looking orcs as well is Raid Shadow Legends, a totally free and top tier mobile game and the sponsor of today's video. There's a ton of awesome things to say about Raid, including the cutting edge animations and graphics, and the addicting gameplay where you level up your characters and equip them with powerful weapons and artifacts. But one of the best parts of Raid is that the unlockable heroes of this game actually comes with their own lore and background. And this is where the orcs come in. Contrary to certain other universes, the orcs in Raid have actual personalities, and they're definitely not all bad. They were turned into a nomadic people after a massive war against both humans and high elves destroyed the realm, and now, well, they're just doing what most people are trying to do, which is to say survive. They're also looking for revenge though, and if you want to find out more, well then go play Raid's campaign which offers a ton of exciting story and background, featuring some really unique looking orc heroes, including my favorite, Nogdar the Headhunter, who looks a lot like a servant of a certain wizard, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, and lastly, Raid Shadow Legends is no longer just a mobile game, but can be played directly on your computer as well, even sporting some awesome customizable graphics options, including 4K resolution and unlimited FPS options, which I think shows great dedication to the hardcore players. All of this means that now is the time to jump into Raid, and if you click the link in the description or scan my personal QR code on the screen, you'll get a unique bonus worth a massive $30 for an early game fun boost, including the epic champion Tyrell, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient charge so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in-game. And the rewards will be waiting for you in the inbox in the top right corner. This early game bonus for beginners is available for the next 30 days, so make sure you check out Raid Shadow Legends right now on Android, iOS, Windows, or Mac OS. And with that, we're back to Shogun 2. One does do well to remember, however, that in 2011, Shogun 2 was brand new. It signaled a return to a more feudal type of warfare and way of life after the more modern age of gunpowder seen in both Empire and Napoleon. When I think about it, it's actually really strange to think about that the Total War series in 2011 hadn't even seen a second Rome. It feels so long ago yet not so far away at the same time, and I keep saying this but I really don't think time is real. Anyway, Shogun 2 works like any other Total War game in that it offers both a campaign and the signature Total War battles, and for the sake of ease and introduction, let's take a look at the campaign first, and see which innovations Shogun 2 offered us players. Shogun 2 puts us back into the Japanese Sengoku era a time of the warring clans of Japan, a time of samurai warriors, and even the famed, the only, Yari Ashigaru. Yari Ashigaru provide excellent defense against enemy cavalry charges. We're given several factions to play here, and I think what most people would say right about now is that the faction diversity is not the best here. Well, to that I would say, fair enough, I suppose. Just like with the Wrath of Sparta DLC for Rome 2, that kinda is what happens when you focus on one particular region at a time. But contrary to the Greek factions in Wrath of Sparta, there's a whole lot more going on here. For one, the starting positions of the various factions have a lot to say when it comes to early game difficulty. My favorite two factions happen to be in very different positions, and I guess we can call them the Red and Blue Samurai. The Red Samurai, namely Takeda, is a faction with some seriously powerful cavalry, but they begin in a very tough position surrounded by potential enemies. Especially on the hardest difficulty is this a very tough beginning, but if you can survive the first dozen turns, you have a great chance of making it even further. The Blue Samurai, represented by the Date, have a very different role. They offer powerful infantry units and are located far away from most other factions, meaning they have a relatively easy starting position. This is a faction I like to suggest for beginners then, as you can really take your time as a Date. No matter which faction you play as though, discovering Japan in all its glory is a treat. The campaign map is not only larger than ever, but the highly stylistic choice of the map visuals helps to differentiate it from the Empire and Napoleon maps. I love seeing the trade represented by traveling merchants, and the sea and coastlines have a very unique and almost mesmerizing look to them. 
What I'm not as in love with are the city models, which I find to be the least impressive of the game's graphics. They're just kind of there, all looking more or less the same. They're much more complicated and fun looking in Fall of the Samurai, where it looks like we have some actual city sprawl. What is interesting about this map, however, is that Shogun 2 had three different styles depending on the campaign you played. We of course had the Vanilla Grand Campaign, but the game received two large campaign DLCs which altered the very aesthetic of the map. The first of these were the Rise of the Samurai campaign, where the map has a distinctly brighter look. The second is the Fall of the Samurai map, which looks a lot more realistic and dark. I think each of these fit the time period really well, and I love the experimentation done by the team here. If you want to see more on the Fall of the Samurai by the way, then make sure to check out my review of the game after this video. I would say that the topographical diversity for the vanilla campaign could have been increased somewhat though, as you're basically either seeing really flat terrain or extremely tall mountains. Either way though, this map is as beautiful as it is massive, and this rang all the more true when it came out over a decade ago. And the soundtrack? While a tad too timid and in the background for my taste, it's distinctly Japanese and offers some truly gorgeous tunes, especially on the battlefields. The best things about the Shogun campaign, however, are all the campaign mechanics that together make a really big difference. Take for example the all-new general system, which made our commanders so much more customizable and personal than they ever were before. Whereas generals could achieve ranks and traits in the earlier games, Shogun 2 introduced the very first system of an actual skill tree. Generals level up as you play and win battles which award you ability points, and in this way, each general can be specialized into leading various troops depending on your playstyle. I think this system sets the standard for Total War General's mechanics to come, and even though it's a simple one, it's easy enough to understand, yet complex enough to have meaning. In many ways, I prefer it to Rome 2's and beyond due to this fact. We also have the return of the technology tree, which now looks a lot more refined and intentional than the one in Empire, for example. Even the family tree is back and is better than ever, and Shogun 2 becomes the first Total War game to offer a food mechanic. In terms of cities and settlements, Shogun 2 followed the example Empire and Napoleon set before it. We have the return of that system by way of having larger cities be the main settlements in a region, while the landscape is dotted by smaller towns and resource outposts. Even though I think the UI could have done away with the little markers that tell us what they do at a glance, I love the use of these smaller towns. They're not perfect, partly because I wish they were more dynamic or interesting somehow, but the concept is what I really love here. It makes it that much more important to own a blacksmith town and other resources because they actually impact the armor and weapons grid of your units. It allows for diversity in city management, several points of interest around the map that are not potential castle sieges, and I absolutely love the concept of having things like ports divided from the city. This was a feature in both Empire, Napoleon, and Shogun 2. And I'm actually really annoyed that they removed it for Rome 2, with the best example of this removal being a horrible decision becoming evident when, as we see, the most important city in the game, Rome, does not have a port. If Rome 2's system had been like Shogun's, Austria could have existed as a port city, and absolutely everybody would have lived happily ever after. But no. Once again, woe is me. I think this is a good time to talk about the UI, because to me, Shogun 2's UI is near perfection. Look at this screen right here, for example. Now tell me, what do you see? Exactly. You see perfection, my friend. You see the small rounded system of menus down in the right corner and the optional map in the top right, with conveniently hit menus that quickly shows you event messages, diplomatic relations, and your armies in a fast and easy way as you want them to appear. If you click on a settlement or an army, they elegantly pop up down in the left corner. And further, if you examine a general, a page pops up on the left. Things like engaging in diplomacy or researching technology will open a larger window in the middle of the screen. But because we're not taking away from the map itself, everything appears extremely fluid and smooth, and I think Shogun 2's UI design is so slick and modern looking for these reasons. It is perhaps my favorite Total War UI tied with Attila's and Troy's, and it's just so much more forward looking than the likes of Warhammer's more chunky one for example. We even have agent and event cinematics here, many of which take direct inspiration from the likes of Medieval 2, and yet again, symbolizes the dedication of the whole vibe here.
In terms of the overall campaign experience when it comes to the AI, Shogun 2 might just be one of the hardest Total War games of all time. I say this because the AI is generally extremely aggressive, which makes it important to build your armies and meet the enemy especially during the early parts of your campaign. Alliances don't necessarily last too long either, and it can be hard to achieve trade agreements even with certain friendly factions. Take too long to do anything as Takeda for example, and you'll be eaten alive from the north and the south. Factions like either Date or Shimatsu, which are both situated at the edges of the map, fare much better in this respect. But again, way too long to expand and you'll regret it soon enough. If you make it to the mid to late game though, Shogun 2 offers a mechanic we've seen other takes on in many other Total War games, but which here is known as Realm Divide, and it's arguably one of the more extreme ones. Realm Divide is a mechanic so hated by sections of the community, partially because it can completely throw you off your game in a rather unbalanced way, and I'll tell you why. Realm Divide is triggered when you've conquered enough settlements and are powerful enough to effectively challenge the Shogun in Kyoto, at which point he declares you an enemy of Japan. It makes it so that every single faction in the game becomes your enemy, effectively ending diplomacy and peace as we know it. As one Steam user so hilariously commented, Realm Divide is the point where the AI stops pretending not to hate you. Others would perhaps say nothing, and choose to let Shogun 2 say it for them. Shameful display! A shameful display! Now, I've kind of always liked this sort of thing as it poses a really big late game challenge in games where these are sorely needed. Rome 1 had that feature where you order 66 the Senate, and Medieval 2 had a threesome of a Mongol invasion, a Timurid invasion, and a Black Death. And yet, Shogun 2 seems the most brutal as it's so immediate, and there's not a lot of places to hide on this island. I do think it poses a massive challenge if you're prepared for this massive war though, but for unsuspecting players who perhaps rely on trade with friendly neighbors, Realm Divine poses a rather rude awakening. All in all though, the campaign experience in Shogun 2 holds up really well, and I think we in part can thank the excellent UI experience for that. But the other side of the Total War coin remains the battles of course, and Shogun 2 offers some of the absolute best in the series. Shogun 2 marked the return of close combat medieval style warfare, and even though it uses the same engine as the oh so buggy Empire, Shogun 2 somehow managed to offer a so much more polished and immersive battle experience. Not only are the units gorgeous and the battle maps nicely stylized, but the flow of battle inherits from Napoleon a sense of realism and intuitiveness. Soldiers face up nicely, somehow making match combat look extremely cool, offering one of the most cinematic Total War combat experiences ever. I adore the way archers are rightfully powerful, and the flight of every arrow is just really satisfying to watch. What is important to know about the combat in Shogun 2 is that it's based on a rock paper scissor foundation, perhaps more so than any other Total War. Here, sword carrying samurai have an advantage against spearmen. Spearmen easily take down cavalry, while cavalry in turn run down archers as if they're nothing. Archers will pick up swordsmen from afar, and so it goes around and around. It's very important to be aware of these facts and turn them to your advantage. Coupled with the fact that the field battles of Shogun 2 features several terrain variations, including open fields and large hills, makes position and tactics vital to achieve victory. I think this diversity is why I prefer the field battles over the siege battles. Now the siege battles in Shogun are beasts of their own. The castles here are largely just that, glorified forts with walls that need defending and or attacking. The larger the castles, the more there is to attack, and with the largest of them all, I personally think less is more in Shogun 2. I have so much more fun playing as the defenders in siege battles because attacking seems like a chore on the higher levels, and I love picking off the enemy with a castle filled with defending archers. The focus on walls and relatively easy defense of these gives the defender a big advantage which I think is appropriate, but like I suggested, because every city is virtually identical, being the attacker can sour rather quickly in my opinion. Overall though, the uniqueness of Shogun 2's units compared to other Total Wars, namely on the use of heavy samurai warriors, Powerful archers and fast moving cavalry makes these battles both intense and tactical, and while it is true that you'll see the same units over and over again, I actually never feel like it ever turns boring. It's not like in ancient Greece where you have a phalanx army stab each other for a thousand hours, because here, every battle is more dynamic than the last due to this rock paper scissor mentality. It's almost weird that they even included naval combat in this one, and even though I'm happy with the inclusion, naval combat prior to the real advent of gunpowder has never really been my thing. Others might love them for very good reasons, but like in Rome 2, I think they're mostly a chore to play. Luckily then, since navies are mostly used to transport and blockade ports, you can probably manage to avoid most naval combat if you really want to. And for everything else, there's always auto-resolve.
Shogun 2 is a fan favorite for a reason. Its campaign is beautiful and modern even a decade later. The only need for a remaster this game has would be to fix up on an overly aggressive campaign AI, a few visual enhancements and fixing the campaign multiplayer which is doomed to desync at some point. And yes, sure, the campaign lacks a certain depth that I would want to see in every Total War, like more population mechanics and deeper state management. But other than that, Shogun 2 is near perfection in terms of Total War, especially considering the mess that was Empire that came out a few years earlier. The UI is fancy, it's fun to upgrade and tailor General's abilities, and I love the dynamism between larger settlements and smaller towns. On the battlefield, Shogun 2 elevates the more static warfare of Empire and Napoleon to one of the series' most dynamic battlefields ever. It's just a beautiful sight to see samurai armies clash followed by archer volleys and cavalry charges, and even though I wish General survived a tad longer, the overall experience is absolutely superb. Shogun 2 was a fantastic game in 2011, and due to its modern systems and solid campaign and battle foundations, it remains a gem in 2022. I highly recommend playing Shogun 2 if you miss Old Japan or have yet to visit, and playing this game really makes me wish for an even more detailed Shogun 3 at some point. Thank you so much for watching. Shogun 2 is the definition of old but gold, and remains one of CA's finest titles. Let me know what you think of Shogun 2 in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, your thoughts, and consider supporting me on Patreon, where every donation means the world to me. Do make sure to let me know which Total War you want me to check out next. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.